Happy Yom Teruah everyone, or at least almost, because the fall appointed times are just right around the corner. My family is going to be celebrating Yom Teruah the, from sunset on Friday, September 18th, until sunset on Sabbath, September 19th. And Yom Teruah is day of blowing or blasting the implied shofar or ram's horn or the trumpet, day of making noise, day of shouting. This is a very joyous day and it has so many implications in scripture, but it doesn't have a lot of commands. So in this video, I want to share with you how I understand what the scripture commands of us regarding this day, as well as share with you how my family is going to be practically keeping this day, some of the different things that we're going to be doing. I don't know that this is gonna be everything that we do this year, um, because I might add more things to it, you know, at the last minute or whatever, but this will give you a really good idea of how we're gonna be keeping Yom Teru this year. Before I hop into that, I want to welcome you to this video. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for joining me again today. I can't wait to hear from you in the comments all about your Yom Teru celebration this year. What are you planning to do? How are you going to keep it? Share in the comments below. And if you are new to this channel, I want to welcome you. My name is Raquel and I make videos all about enthusiastically and practically living out God's word in your heart, home, and family. I would love to have you subscribe and join this community because we have an amazing group of people here who love God, who love his word, and are just seeking to obey him in all that we do. So in this video, I'm going to hop right in. I'm not going to have a ton of scripture that I'm going to like read or quote in this um, video just to keep it short, but I will put all references to scripture in the description box so that you can kind of study out this appointed time on your own if you like. So let's get into it. Leviticus chapter 23. It's kind of sorry about the lighting and sorry about the books of the box of books, the box of books over here, but it is what it is. This is my home. I live here. Oh, and look, I have some thread that's fallen down. Okay, whatever. But um, let's get into this. Leviticus chapter 23 is kind of where most people go when they want to know about the Moedim, about the appointed times of Yahweh, of God. And so I do want to just mention real quick here, Yom Teruah is not a feast. And what I mean by that, I don't mean you can't eat because, oh, I am definitely going to be eating. What I mean by that is that it's never called a Chag in Scripture. C-H-A-G, Chag. It is never called a Chag in Scripture, but it is one of the Moedim um, of God. And so you'll see that in Leviticus chapter 23. There is something specific that God wants us to do on this day in order to meet with Him. You'll see that in Numbers chapter 28 and 29, specifically chapter 29 with Yom Teruah, where God God says, this is one of the Moedim. I want to meet with you in the specific time, the specific season, in the specific way. God is very specific. And so even though it's not a Chag, it is definitely still a commandment and a big part of how God frames his year and a big part of God's biblical calendar that he seems to like to work on. I mean, you notice Yeshua died on Passover. We notice that he was offered up as the first fruits of the resurrection. We notice that he poured out his spirit on Pentecost or Sukkot, I'm not Sukkot, Shavuot. And so God is working on this calendar and Yom Teruah has some really huge, significant implications in scripture of what it's going to look like when Yeshua comes again. So before I get too ahead of myself, let's just go straight to Leviticus chapter 23 to verse 23 and 25 and read what it says about how to keep this day. Because I think sometimes we get really overwhelmed when we're first walk, coming into this walk and we want to know how to do all these things and you know we grew up with Christmas we grew up with Easter or whatever else and so we know how to do those things because we're just kind of born into it you know we just we see it around us and we just kind of take it on no one has to teach us how to do those things but when we're coming into God's culture we're learning a new culture and so sometimes we need a little bit of help but thankfully God's word spells it out very clearly and then there's a lot of liberty within that so so um, let's just get right into it. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 23. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath 
a memorial of blowing of trumpets and holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein, but you shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. And that is all the instructions that we have regarding Yom Teruah. Numbers chapter 29 verses um, 1 through 6 also talk about Yom Teruah in detail, but it's mostly about what the specific sacrifices and offerings were. We are not doing that would only be the priests, the high priests that would do those things. So what we get from the scripture is that Yom Teruah is a Sabbath. It's a day of rest, a day that's set apart specifically for something. Two, we're not to do any labor, any regular servile labor on it. We're not to be going to our jobs and things like that because we're going to be doing other things. We're going to be having a holy convocation. That's number three. A holy convocation is a, in my opinion, and I know there's debate about this, but the way that I see it used in scripture and what I understand it is from Hebrew and Greek scholars, because I'm not a Hebrew and Greek scholar, so I have to rely upon others. The way I understand a holy convocation, a mikra kodesh, is that it is a public worship service, a public reading of Torah. And so in order for it to be a public reading of Torah, you of course need people to gather together, the public to come together, right? And so a holy convocation for me would be like getting together with our congregation, I'm getting together with other believers and reading the Torah, reading the scriptures. Um, next, it tells us that Yom Teruah is a memorial of blowing of trumpets. Now let's just break this down real quick. It says it's a memorial. This is really interesting. The word memorial there is a form of the Hebrew word zakhar. Um, zakhar means remembrance or remember. And basically it tells us that this is a day of remembrance. Now my question for you is what are we remembering? Or what is God remembering? Or what are we both remembering? Um, because the scripture doesn't tell us what we're re remembering. And so I challenge you to go study that out in scripture. I certainly have my own opinion of what we are to remember and what God is remembering, but um, it doesn't tell us specifically what in scripture it is a remembrance of. So go study that out. It's really interesting. Um, and then it says a blowing of trumpets. Now in the Hebrew, this is just really teruah. That's all it is. Um, teruah can mean making noise, it can mean shouting, it can mean blowing or blasting, and then it implies a shofar or a trumpet. And so this day is just all about kind of just raising your voice to the most high, right? Um, voice, whether it's through blowing or shouting or singing or anything like that. And finally, there are some instructions for the priest on this day. There are sacrifices that would be happening as well as um, blowing into silver trumpets. Now, I did not read that part. That is in Numbers chapter 10, verse 10, where we read that anytime there is an appointed time, your, your translation might say feast, but that word there for feast in the Hebrew is moed. Um, so anytime there is a moed, anytime it is the first of the month, the priests are to blow into these two silver trumpets that have been um, made, like formed. Someone has actually beaten the work. I don't know how trumpets are made from silver, but scripture explains how it was done and in Numbers chapter 10. And so the priests are to blow in that. So we kind of see two things happening here. We have the priests who are doing the sacrifices and they are blowing into silver trumpets. But then you also have the people who are getting together in this holy convocation. They're not doing any work. Um, they're keeping this as a Sabbath and they are making noise. Now, whether that's through a shofar, whether that's through a trumpet, whether that's through your voice singing, shouting, scripture doesn't say specifically in, this, in these passages. So Leviticus chapter 23 verses 23 through 25, that is all we get as far as how to keep this, this um, appointed time of God. And other than that, we have liberty. So if you want to just, you know, go to your uh, congregation, make some noise and praise to God um, and not do any work, then there you have it. But if you want to go all out and make it really fancy and decorate and stuff, well, you can do that too. There is liberty there to do more or less, to keep it simple, to keep it fancy, however you like to do it, as long as you're obeying these specific commandments, um, which regard us. Obviously, we're not priests and we should not be trying to do their jobs.
So, um, in scripture, we do have an example of people keeping Yom Teruah, and that's in Nehemiah chapter 8, verses 2 through 12. And so, I'm just going to read off some notes that I wrote after reading that passage of what they did. Um, the people read Torah publicly, and it was expounded upon by um, the priests as to what it meant, what the Torah meant. Everyone gathered together, and then they also stood up whenever the Torah was read. Um, they blessed God, they lifted their hands, they bowed their heads, they worshiped with their faces to the ground. It was to be a day of joy because when they heard the word read, you know, it pricks your heart, it convicts you. And so they were weeping and things and they said, stop, this is not a day to weep, it's not a day to mourn, it's a day to rejoice. They ate and drank and they shared with others who maybe didn't have food and drink. And they celebrated. That's what scripture has to say explicitly about how we're commanded to keep Yom Teruah and this explicit example of how they kept it in the book of Nehemiah. But there are also a lot of scriptures that bring in these connections to Yom Teruah um, with particular themes. And I would say especially the apostolic writers, they wanted to make some strong connections to Yom Teruah that their audience at the time would have definitely known about. You know, being part of the culture, knowing what God's appointed times are, knowing about Yom Teruah and what it is all about, they would have made some very strong connections to it um, based on what some of the based on some of the imagery that the Apostolic writers give us. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second. But these two, there are two really major themes that come up about Yom Teruah, and that is God's kingship and God's judgment. And they kind of go hand in hand, of course, because when Messiah comes, he's coming as king and he's coming as judge. But let me just read Psalm chapter 47. And it's a short, it's a short Psalm, but only nine verses. But this one is a really good example of how Teruah is coming in with the coming of the Lord, with the kingship of God. And it says, Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. For the Lord Most High is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, Yahweh with the sound of a shofar. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our king. Sing praises, for God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. God reigns over the heathen. God sits upon the throne of his holiness. The princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong unto him. He is greatly exalted. And there are many other psalms. Psalm chapter 98, Psalm chapter 145, they talk about Teruah in connection, and the ram's horn, the shofar, in connection to God being king over all the earth, God gathering together his people from the nations and um, being king over the earth and judging. So we see this connection between Teruah and kingship and judgment. And then when you go to the apostolic, right? Oh, and also in the Tanakh, this is just a little side note. If you look up why the ram's horn was used, many times it was to announce a new king. A new king was come uh, anointed or ordained or whatever. So kingship and judgment are huge themes in regard to Teruah and the day of the Lord, the day of his coming. Also in the apostolic writings, we kind of have this continue. Um, when Yeshua comes again, it's written in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 16 and 17 that he's going to be coming with Teruah. He's going to be coming with shouts. He's going to be coming with the shofar of God. He's going to be coming to gather his people. And so we're seeing all of these same connections. Yom Teruah is also the first of the month. And the first of the month is a little bit different from a lot of other days of the month because the moon had to be sighted. The new moon that began the new month had to be sighted. And so you'd have watchers out there who would, you know, just keep an eye on the sky all night long until they saw that first little sliver of the moon. And then they run and they go tell everyone that the new moon was sighted and now, um, you know, it's the new month. And so they had to be, they had to watch for it because no man knew the day nor the hour when that would be sighted. They kind of had a good idea because they were, they were watching the cycles of the moon 
moon, they knew the times and the seasons that they were in, but they didn't really know exactly when. And when you get that imagery of Yom Teruah being the first of the month with what Yeshua talks about with his return, that no man knows the day or the hour, that you need to be like watchmen, be sober, be awake, be alert, um, be prepared, have your oil lamps trimmed. You know, all of this imagery is just pointing us back to Yeshua's return. Yeshua is going to be king. Yeshua is coming as judge. And so it's really an exciting and fascinating study when you can get into the word of God and look up these themes in connection to Yom Teruah or Teruah in general. Shouting, making noises, blasting the shofar, blowing the shofar. Um, it's just all in connection to God's kingship and his judgment and his the messianic reign of Messiah. Definitely encourage you that if you have not gotten into those scriptures and just really delved in and figured out what this day is all about, me saying this stuff cannot replace um, you doing this study yourself. It's just so incredibly exciting um, to see what the scriptures have to say, to see the connections that he makes. Uh oh, my, my baby's getting into toys in here now. Um, but yeah, so. That's what Yom, Yom Tur is all about. That's how we're commanded to keep it. So now let me talk about my own family, what we're going to do this year. And I know this video is probably long. I respect your time. And so if it's too long, I will split it in half. There'll be part one. And then this will start part two. But um, so let's talk about how my family is going to celebrate. Don't forget to put in the comments how your family is going to celebrate Yom Teruah this year. This year, I really, um, as I've been contemplating this, thinking about considering the, the season that we're in, um, the idea of knowing the signs of the season, being watchful and being ready for the season is just really on my heart and mind this year. And so that's what I'm kind of be, going to be pushing. Of course, still talking about Yeshua is the king, Yeshua is the judge, because that's what we're preparing for. Oh, excuse me for just a Sorry about that. My baby needed me. But anyhow, so yeah, I'm really going to be focusing on the seasons and knowing the season that we're in, being watchful of the season, being prepared for Yeshua to come again as king and as judge. And so just seasons is kind of my word that I'm working with here. Um, on Friday evening, we're going to start with a feast with a meal. And um, we do this with all of the appointed times as we go into that uh, appointed time that it starts at evening. So we start off at dinner with a feast and it's not just a fancy meal, but I try to incorporate a lot of scripture through those like booklets that I've shown you. This year, I'm actually just going to use an index card with scriptures written on it because my printer doesn't want to work for me and I can't print off the little program or whatever. Um, so I'm just going to use an index card so my husband knows what scriptures to read. And um, we have different like object lessons gonna, that I'm going to have on the table. So like for example, I have my notes listed here. Um, food. We're going to be eating seasonal food. So I know for sure I'm going to be making some apple dumplings because that just sounds so yummy. And it doesn't matter if Yom Teruah is happening in September or October, but apples are in season. Praise God. So I'm going to have some apple dumplings for dessert for sure. Um, some honey and butter on oh mine, not on my husband's. He can't have dairy, but honey and butter and cinnamon and just mm, all that goodness. Um, and then I haven't decided on the menu yet, honestly, but you know, it might be a little bit early for like butternut squash soup or something like that. I have to think about my, my menu still, but it's going to be something seasonal. And then I'm going to have some crown challah, which if you're not sure what crown challah is, it's basically um, challah bread, you know, it's braided and it's put in a circle. But there are, there's like a particular way you can braid it so that it comes out circular. My daughter is blowing the kit so far that we have. That's going to be representative of like King Yeshua, crown challah. So um, that's going to be really great. I'm gonna have fancy dishes set, fancy tablecloths, setting thing, you know. I'm, I'm not really a great decorator. I'm not really, I don't know, I'm just not good at that stuff. It's gonna be fancy, ta it's a nice tablecloth and some flowers. And we're going to, instead of having candles this year, we're going to have an oil lamp. And we're gonna, one of the scriptures we're gonna be reading is Matthew 25 about the virgins um, who are getting ready for their bridegroom to come and they need to have their oil lamps ready and filled to, for him to come. So we're going to eat be yeah. So we're going to be eating my oil lamp, having that fancy just different from the other six days of the week type of meals, fancy uh, dinner, and then those seasonal foods and the crown hala to represent Christ coming. Um, I'm planning to decorate with signs of the season. So I'm going to go outside and get some pine cones, some different leaves. We don't get really beautiful colored leaves here, but I do have some yellow ones and stuff that are already falling. Um, 
if I could find some pumpkins, I didn't grow pumpkins, but if I could maybe find some pumpkins, um, maybe get some beeswax candles because right now in August at least is when most of the beekeepers around here start pulling out all their honey. So honey is a great thing to decorate with and beeswax candles and stuff like that. Like I said, I'm not a great decorator, so I'm really not going to go all out with this, but just have some of those signs of the season um, around us. And I know in the past I've done like royal theme with purple and gold and glitter. Um, I've done new musical instruments and so we've had all kinds of musical instruments out and as we've come to the psalm where it talks about that particular musical instrument then we've used that instrument to praise God. I've done like a phases of the moon project which connected between all of the fall appointed times. Um, so yeah I'm not like a really good decorator but my the plan this year is just signs of the seasons. I have some music playing as we're eating and reading the scriptures. Um, I haven't made my playlist yet but I'm thinking some of Miku Adim yeah. stuff because I love their music. Um, He's Coming Again by Joshua Aaron would be a good choice. And then I think it's Paul Wilbur, He Will Reign Over All the Earth, which is also one of the Psalms that we'll be reading. And that might be a good choice to so just have on the back, like in the background, kind of low, um, just some music. And then later, maybe my kids will more than likely will turn it up and we'll just all start dancing, right? And praising the king, which will be very joyous and fun. Oops, he's going to use the index card to go through the Matthew chapter 25, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17, and stuff like that. And again, I'm going to be really focusing on this idea of being prepared for Yeshua's return as king and as um, judge. So then after we go through, you know, all of our, our dinner party, um, just being joyful, being in the scriptures, uh, be partaking in all these visuals as part of our meal, then we will be blowing the shofar starting that evening up until uh, Shabbat evening when Yom Teruah ends. We have a shofar, so we're going to be blowing that outside, and we'll probably be, you know, looking at the moon and the stars and things like that, and again, praising the Creator, singing songs, shouting, just making a joyful noise. We'll be using some of the Psalms, like I mentioned, Psalm 47, Psalm 98, Psalm 145 and there may be others that I might choose also just to praise God with our voices and with the shofar um, and it's just going to be a really great celebratory time. So that is Friday evening when Yom Teruah begins and then the next morning we are going to be going to our congregation and gathering together with other believers for the holy convocation that's commanded in scripture. Of course in all of this we're not going to be doing any of our regular work. Um, we're going to be keeping it as a Sabbath and so um, when we go to our Shabbat service, we're going to have, you know, a, a message. Of, we're going to read through all the scriptures that pertain to Yom Teruah. We're going to have a message about the day and things like that. We gather together and feasting with our congregation, and it's just going to be a really fabulous day. So that is what we are doing for Yom Teruah this year, and I hope that you found it helpful. Um, maybe gave you some ideas. Um, if you want to know more about what we've done in years past, then just ask me in the comments, and I'd love to share more about that. Um, yeah, I'm really excited for Yom Teruah. Let me know in the comments what you're preparing to do. I would love to hear from you. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe so you don't miss out on more content about enthusiastically and practically living out God's word in your heart, home, and family. I pray that God would bless all of you and keep you. I'm going to talk with you later. Bye-bye.